the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us sit quietly and listen to the readings. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ha, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Be not afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the
and all the members do not have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ. And individually, member one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exalts in his exaltation, he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness.
as the Archbishop takes a seat in front of the altar and the vocations director will come to call out the beginnings to be ordained priest and they will be presented to the Archbishop. Let those of your day priest please come forward. Reverend Egeyuru Imadre. I say welcome and 
congratulations to you as one of your own is stepping into God's fear. To the mothers and fathers of priest groups who will be traveling to pray for priests, I thank you and ask that you add these our brothers to the list of those you pray for daily. To all priests of the Archdiocese of Benedictine and those who have come from outside, we say welcome to the ancient city of Benin, the heartbeat of the nation and the home of hospitality. In a special way, I bring the general vicar of the order of the stars Carmelites. Welcome. We can also thank the cathedral administrator and his pastoral team and the entire faithful of the cathedral for hosting this year's ordination. To my vicar general and the vocation team who assist me in the process of discernment, I say, God bless you all. Amen. The praise God Almighty, who is the owner of the vineyard, and who has been blessing us year after year with vocations to the sacred priesthood. This year's ordination is indeed unique, as we have six of our own sons who will be ordained as priests for the Archdiocese and three of our brothers from the order of the Spouse Carmelites, who will also be raised to the order of the priesthood as well, making it a total of nine of our sons who will be ordained as <laughs> We must never take it for granted not to thank God for the gift of the priesthood. Every single application and successful response to the call of God to be a priest is possible because God started, provided the enabling graces, provided persons to assist in the formation, provided the resources, and also find the willing person ready to answer yes, here I am, send me. The ritual of the ordination will remind us again that there is a need to put the question before these young men who for over 10 years have been reflecting on the question. Am I called or not? Is it life of the question meant for me or not? In the past 10 years, they have had several mandatory retreats and for some of them, private moments of recollection to think about it. The people of God have prayed for them. They have had their hands, priests have written several evaluations, and they themselves have been have, have written applications for several ministries. They apply to be admitted into the seminary, they apply to receive candidacy, they apply to be instituted as lecturers, they apply to be instituted as acolytes, they apply to the ordained deacons, and they apply to the ordained as priests. Nothing less than six applications before they got to where they are today. In spite of these several applications today, the church is still going to ask them if they are ready in the presence of all of us. This goes to show the importance of church the church places on the vocation of the sacred priesthood. The questions are not mere formalities. The answers from the candidates are not program responses, but answers from the sincere hearts. When they are songs, the applause of the faithful are approvals that they will be with you in prayer, both in good times and in bad times. Their applause and joy today is to say that they are grateful to God and to you for presenting yourself to serve as a bridge between God and man. Your family members, your friends, your formations in the seminary, the priests who helped to shape you, those who supported 
thank you morally and financially. I am happy because today this ceremony is God's answer to their years of prayers. To all of them, we say thank you for everything we did to make today a reality. The identity of the priesthood is well expressed in the sacred scriptures and the ministerial of the church. The scriptural text today reminds us that the priest acts on behalf of women before God. Priests are called to deal with things connecting human beings to God. All the life and actions of a priest must always have eschatological dimension, that is, pointing to heaven. It is called to submit his way and intellect in obedience to the superior in imitation of Christ, who became one of us and emptied himself by accepting death on the cross. Priests are ordained to follow this life of Christ through sacrificing their natural rights for the good of the people of God. Through poverty, they are detached from material things for the sake of the kingdom of God. Through the promise and commitment to change sacrifice, they renounce the use of their sexual faculties for the sake of the kingdom of God. These three core commitments, the promise of obedience, poverty, and celibacy, are all meant to make them more suited to the bridges between human beings and God. The first reading of today makes it abundantly clear that we are not products of accidents. No one comes into this world without a divine mission from God. We are products of God's well thought out plan. The Lord tells Jeremiah, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Whenever we read this text, it should rejuvenate in us the hope that nothing can overcome us in this world. God knows what He has put into us, and He knew before He formed us what we are going to encounter. The actual grace of God from God is enough to see us through whatever we are going to face or what we are facing now. Let us never lose hope. The difficulties of life may present us with great obstacles to move forward. The economy may make us to think of using illegal means to obtain wealth, but let us know that peace and joy only last when we place our trust in God who formed us before we were born in the womb. God knew us before He formed us. He has made provisions for the challenges we are going to face in life. God will never allow anything that will overwhelm us come to us. Jeremiah's response to God is that he will not know, he did not know how to speak because he is still a youth. It is good to recognize our limitations before God, who knows everything about us. This act of recognition is an act of prayer to God. God told the prophet that he should only tell the people what he has instructed and that God will be with him. This assurance that God will be with him was enough for Jeremiah. The only beloved, these young men are going into the vineyard of God and God will be with them. God will be with them in moments when they are happy and when they are sad. God will be with them in moments of success and failure. God will be with all of us in times of plenty and in times of famine. God will be with you in times of good health and in times of poor health. And will be with you at the quest of God and the ever fails. To my dear sons who are ready to enter the sacred priesthood today, I want you as well as all the priests 
to be aware of this commitment of God towards you. I will be with you. Never forget this. Sometimes your superior, your bishop, parents, priest, the senior, brother, priest, classmates, parishioners, and even on those people may be of great help to you. They will be with you sometimes when they cannot be with you all the time. Only God's presence has no explanation time. Human comforts, human help, human goodwill, human applause, human provisions are never permanent. Only God's presence is permanent. The service provides us with the blessing that comes from who all from always be with God. He says, Blessed are those and they who dwell in your house, O Lord. To dwell in the house of God means we are conscious that we carry God within us. Through baptism, our lives are infused into that of Christ. In another sense, to dwell in the house of the Lord means to go to the church to make our prayers to God. To all the faithful I say, make our time to receive Christ in the Blessed Sacrament where he dwells perpetually. Our sons who will be raised to the honor of the sacred priesthood, the church is your house. The reason why the rectory or the father's house is often, as we often call it, is close to the church, is so that you are aware that the nature of your priestly calling requires constant availability. Blessed are those who dwell in the house of God. Blessed are those priests who are available to the faithful. To be available is a job. Priestly work does not consist only in activism, that is, in just doing something or being in action. A priest who is available may not consult them as to fill this work as much as the one who is available and is consulted by many. We shall not be judged by the number of people that came to see us for pastoral help, but by the fact that we are always dwelling in the house of the Lord and ready to be of help to all who call on us. The smartphone must also be used to help us to forgive the gospel. Priests should develop the habit of responding to calls and messages as soon as possible. Do not ignore the message of your parishioners. Do not be selective in those whose call you receive. Always be available to everyone whom you can help. Just as we have many priests in the vineyard of God, so also they have diverse gifts. The gifts we have received are to complement each other in the building up of the kingdom of God. To all the priests I say, never see yourselves as competitors or rivals. To the parishioners I say, resist the temptation of comparing a priest with another one. One priest may be a good preacher, while another may be a good listener. The good preacher may be a poor listener, and the good listener may be a good preacher. One priest may be a good singer and may not be a good preacher of the world. One may be a good player, a good at playing musical instruments, while another may, may not be good at it. Yes, God called all of them to use their various gifts to build the body of Christ. So Paul tells us in the second reading that though our gifts are many, our gifts differ. Let us all use these gifts for the same purpose. All gifts may make you popular, but it may never make you feel better than your brother priest. All gifts may make more parishioners come to you more than your brother priest, but it must not make you forget that popularity is not a ticket to heaven. What leads us to heaven is the degree to which we have loved one another in the service of God. One of the challenges we face today is 
is not going to abolish us, especially the parishes with good number of the faithful. As priests, we must make extra effort to know our parishioners. The Gospel of John 10 14 says, The good shepherd knows the sheep, and the sheep knows him. To the great faithful, please make it also easier for your priests to know you. One of the ways of doing this is by being active in the life of the parish, identify with your job, join a lay apostolic group, be active, volunteer yourself, yourself to the parish for and support the church, not only with your resources, but also with your presence in parish activities. The Gospel of Matthew, we have just recently invites us to walk in the Lord's prayers with great sense of humility. Greatness is to be found in service. We, who are privileged to meet the people of God, must truly really be humble. This humility should be manifested in the way we treat our parishioners. I urge you to resist every temptation to shout at the people. Work hard at respecting everyone, even those who disrespect you. As dispensers of respect, never treat people who treat you badly in the same way they did. Never reciprocate bad behavior with another bad behavior because there is no excuse for bad manners. Once again, we congratulate the candidates for ordination on this day, the 19th of August in 1917. Our Lady of Fatima gave a special message to the three children. Since this day will forever remain a date of your priestly ordination, take this message of Our Lady seriously. To the missionaries, Our Lady recommended again the practice of multiplication. Say, pray, pray much, and make sacrifice for sinners. For many souls go to hell because there is no one to sacrifice and pray for them. Pray, pray much, and make sacrifices for sinners, for many souls go to hell because there is no one to sacrifice and pray for them. To the candidates for the nation, you must pray and make sacrifices for the salvation of souls. Multiplication is a Christian faith that involves giving up something for the salvation of souls. Our Lady invites us to pray the rosary daily. Let us, as faithful children of ours, heed to the call to prayer. As priests, we are configured to act in the best of Christ. So let us be close to the mother of Christ, who understands Christ more than any other creature. As priests, we act on behalf of the people of God. Therefore, we must resist the temptation that will lead us into partisan political steps. To act on behalf of the people of God before God requires us to dwell in the house of God and not in political circles. We, as priests, are to help form the consciences of the lay faithful so that they can permeate the world with the order of the gospel. Praise according to the law of the church in Canon 287 are not to take part in partisan politics. Both lay faithful and all priests must keep this in mind and pray to God to bless us with lay faithful who fear God and have respect for the people they need us to in civil governance of our land. To all praise, I say, place your constant trust in Christ and take Mary home as your mother so that you can always have Christ with you. No one who goes to Mary and not find Christ. Mary is a sure pathway to Christ. May our mother Mary teach us how to love our son and love one another. May God bless his words in our hearts and make them bear fruit in our lives through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Master to make their promises. Let us try to be quiet. Those who are coming in, please do it quietly. Dear sons, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood and the Presbyterian branch? Do you 
you promise us that the obedience to be our successors? I do. May God grant you that you will make your ready. Do you promise us that the obedience to be our successors? I do. May God grant you that you will make your ready. to your ordinary do you promise respect and obedience to your leader? I do the God will be done to go on with you bring it to the world
to form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the area covenant, offices and rules established through mystical rights. When you send Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you choose men less to in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their work. So too, in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men and with their help you rule your people with greater ease. So also, upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were the shadow of the good things to come. Both in these last days, but in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your son in, into the world. Jesus, who is an apostle and high priest of our confession, through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim. And he made his apostle consecrated in his truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, with our weakness, to grant us the servants that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant me, pray, Almighty Father, we need your servants the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and in next in rank to the office of the mission. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co workers with their order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the word of the gospel may be fruit in human hearts and reach even to the end of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your ministries, of ministries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of the bed and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and may see grace of May they be joined with us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people that trusted to your care and for all the world. And so may the full number of our nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your own people and made perfect in your kingdom. Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. With the completion of this prayer over the elect, we now have nine new priests.
continue our prayers for them. They will go one by one before the Archbishop. And their hands we are going to.
sent the keys of peace among the disciples. Before two of them were now go to sit by the side of the archbishop.
and the holy altar and serve your people. Grant thy the power of the sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants be constantly pleased you, and in your ch church bear that fruit which lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts.
which is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
My dear brothers and sisters, it is now time for Holy Communion. Holy Communion is only for baptized and practicing Catholics who are in the state of grace. If you are not a Catholic but you are joining for this Mass, please kindly sit where you are and continue to pray. Prayer before Holy Communion.
the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, all the Let us rise for the post communion prayer.
please let us settle down. I now invite the Vicar General of the Archdiocese, Very Reverend Father Dr. Augustine Hige, to come for the presentation of gifts to the newly ordained. Yeah, for the short time in the seminar. 
let us put our hands together and thank you very much. We thank the regional vicar of the Carmelites and the entire Carmelite priest and community that are here today. Thank you very much. We thank the vicar general of the Archdiocese. The very Reverend Father Dr. Augustine A. Gay, and also the parish administrator and vicar for priests, the very Reverend Monsino Festus of Mende, for preparing this place for us today. Thank you, Monsino. We appreciate the three deans, the deans of the three dinaries. The Dean of Felicity Dinari, the Dean of Ipo Bazoa Dinari, the Dean of Apudu Dinari for their support in making sure that this ordination is a success. Thank you. And we thank all the priests, priests of the Archdiocese of Felicity, and priests who have come, who have traveled down to be here today. Thank you very much. We thank all religious here present, the Reverend Sisters, thank you for coming. We thank the formators, all those who guided, assisted, taught the newly ordained priests. We appreciate the staff, rector, and formators of All Saints Major Seminary, and also rector, staff, formators of S. S. Peter and Paul Major Seminary, Bodega Ibano, and also the Carmelite Formators, who say thank you to you all. Let us appreciate them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To the ordination committee, led by the very Reverend Father Dr. Augustine E., we say thank you. Thank you for making everything possible for the organization and for the time. We thank members of that committee. We appreciate the lady led by the lady president and his executive, the seat of the EO of the Archdiocese, the CMO and the CYON. Thank you for coming. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your cooperation. And we thank our various donors, those who assisted us, those who contributed, and those who supported us. We thank in a very special way, the very Reverend Father Yakubu Gowan Abdul Salami and his friends who supported and provided the max buses. Thank you very much. We appreciate the governor and his deputy, the knights and ladies of St. Paul's, the MSS Corals who assisted the charge group, and other individuals and groups as well as the Carmelite community also. We thank you all, all parishes. Some parishes actually supported, so we thank the priests of these parishes. May God continue to bless you all. I thank in a special way the vocations team of the Archdiocese of Bede City. We appreciate the parents, families, friends, relatives of our newly ordained priests. Thank you for supporting them. Thank you for being there for them. Thank you for assisting them. I thank all functionaries here today. The choir, they've done very well today. Thank you very much. Our altar servers, thank you. The church warden, the security personnel, the catechists, we say thank you. We turn the liturgist, Father Dr. Bonaventure Ebu, who took his time to be here to practice with us. We thank you for your time and for coordinating the activities here today. We also appreciate the MC, the major seminarians here present, 
and also the communication department of the Art Houses of Felicity, led by Reverend Father Jude Ora. This ceremony is being streamlined. I thank each and every one of you here present for your time, for your support, and for your cooperation. Finally, I want to thank our newly ordained priests, the nine of them, for making themselves available and for making themselves disposed and for presenting themselves to God and the church. It is our prayer that as we return to our various destinations, our God Almighty will lead us back to our various destinations safely in good health of mind and body. Let us continue to pray for our agencies, for vocations to the priesthood, and let us continue to support the cause of training priests, seminarians, and the archdiocese. Of Felicity. Thank you and God bless you. We thank the vocations director for his words of thanks. And I invite the Chancellor of the Archdiocese, Very Reverend Father Dr. Michael Yaranfo, for some announcements. The Lord is good. All the time, forever and ever. Amen. This is coming from Social Communication Act of Sovereignty. We have a directory that we produce every year. So, preparation for the world of 2024 is ongoing. The purpose of this announcement is for the different associations that have changed their leadership. To please send in their list, send it to Florence System, social communications, different groups and societies, so that they can get it updated for our use. Please, let's do that and do that on time. A lot of pictures and videos put together today, a very comprehensive one, alongside with the the videos and the pictures, they are going to be available at the communication office immediately after now. So all those concerned, you your name, express and well which that's why interested in a very comprehensive one, you go there and you get a copy. There's construction work going on at forest system. Some few persons believe that they closed down the place for now. It's not closed down. They are working fully and completely. So if you still have anything to do with printing, kindly go there and you can attend it to. We want to announce to all that the Catholic Communications Department has been doing wonderfully well in the Acts of Submission. Throughout today, the beginning of this past and now, even as I speak to you, this program is being watched all over the world, Facebook and YouTube. And you want to see yourself after the mass. Don't do well to check Facebook, Veritas Communication Benin, and all that has happened here today, you will see it. And people will see it also everywhere in the world. But right now, they have been watching us singing, dancing, praying, and rejoicing. The same way for YouTube, Catholic Eye Dances of Benin. Just do that and you will see what follows. The Eye Dances of Benin today, they are having harvest tomorrow. At the act in the Gabriel Catholic Church, Santa Road. Every one of us, not priests, we are laity. We are all invited at the time is 10 o'clock. Let's be there and make it a very worthwhile celebration. We have school of the faith and leadership that have been doing so well. And most times, after they have done admissions, people keep going there asking when there will be admissions. I've been asked to announce to you. That for the session 2023 2024, for October, registrations have started already. Just for 2,000 naira, non refundable. Because most of the expenses there are taken care of by the Archbishop, so that we have the opportunity to be trained 
nurture so much in our life, our doctrine, our liturgy, then we will now understand the Catholic Church better. For those who are interested, try as much as possible to approach the office as Airport Road Municipality so that you can register. And for those who want to be leaders in the church, we have been given a period of time for all of us to go through that school so that we understand the kind of church where we want to be leaders. Otherwise, as soon as the time expires, anyone who has not gone through that formation cannot lead us, lead the associations, so that we can understand the church very well and be able to help in the leadership. There are different grades and certificates that you can get through there. Certificate in fundamental characteristics to get into the certificate in marriage counseling, which is important to us, even natural family planning and police method, diploma in basic Catholic theology. We also have degree, degree of education in the faith, and finally, Master's of Science degree, religious education from Anahok University, Mexico Road. This institution has pontifical recognition, recognized by Rome, recognized by the Pope all over the world. Let's make use of this opportunity, both for lay persons, for priests, also for religious. To make it easier, two new stations have now been tapped out. One at Igobazua, Dinere, another one at Abu Dinere. They are bringing the school closer to our home. We cannot make the opportunity now, it will be difficult. I want to announce to you that the school here in the archives of the city is one of the first in the whole of Africa. The government will get the place for leading to come to Christ our home. Today, two priests, among the actors of the visiting priests, they were ordained 19th of August six years ago. They are Father Emmanuel Obon and Father Emmanuel Dennis. We say big congratulations to them and they will continue to bless them in Jesus' name. Father Amun Jude also ordained on a day like this himself and his classmates. We also congratulate them and ask that God to bless him and bless them through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have those here with us. So, the list of those that have sponsored the priests for today and those and the priests that they have sponsored. Before I read them out so that they will come forward and then receive blessings for the priests and then also have to grant for the admission. Let me quickly take this from the different prayers that have been made today. Father, O Philip Paul, immediately after Mass, we have this reception at the CW Hall, Holy Cross Cathedral in this city. And it's Thanksgiving Mass will be tomorrow as a Matara State Church to the road, 9 o'clock in the morning. He's inviting all of us. Father, keep it going. We have his own at the Union Hall at Blessed Thanksgiving. Catholic Church in this city. The standard three months will be tomorrow as a Michael's Catholic Church. 9 a.m. 9 a.m. at the Quenero is inviting all of us. But I give the room in Manuel, we have his own at the social center. His mass tomorrow is only Cross Cathedral at this very place. And it's 9 30 a.m. We have the Carmelite congregation. The three of them are having their reception immediately after mass at the Grotto here in the cathedral. They are inviting all of us to join them. We have Father Ezekuro Edmond. He will be having his own at New Age Event Center beside Holy Cross Cathedral. Beside Holy Cross Cathedral after mass. Then his mass will be at St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic Church tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. Then we have a little son, Michael. He's going to have his own at Mercy Northway Primary School. Then where we have Northern Mercy Primary School, that's in Rome. His class will be tomorrow at Immaculate Conception Parish. Immaculate Conception at 9 o'clock in the morning. So we have Father Confidence. Mbangwa, in its reception, reception will be at Hartage of Echo Youth Center at St. Paul Catholic Church there, Benin City. The standing man to be in St. Paul Catholic Church tomorrow, 9 o'clock in the morning. They want us to join them to celebrate 
Let's make time out to please join them for this great event. We now have the following persons to be invited. For the first time, they will know who they assisted the admission to the sponsor, and also those they have sponsored they also know for the first time. If I call your name, you please step forward. I will also mention the priest so that they can quickly bless you, and then you have photograph of the admission. Reverend Father Michael Elehosa Osanye was sponsored by Mrs. Osifo Osanye Justina and family. Osifo Osanye Justina and family, the Christian Award of Blessing. Osifo Osanye Justina and family also provided mass bus and investment for Father Michael Elehosa Osanye. Thank you so very much. God bless you. Thank you for assisting His grace for sponsoring Brother Michael the Levinson. God bless you and your family. Amen. Thank you so very much. Just step forward, you meet his place and have that photograph. Thank you so much. Reverend Father Godwin Chukun of So Ibe was sponsored by Sir and Lady Isaac Chekoba. Sir and Lady Isaac Chekoba, thank you so very much for assisting his grace to sponsor Reverend Father Godwin Chukun of So Ibe. Father Godwin Chukun of So Ibe, please step down so that you can bless them. As we prepare for Sir and the United Chiku Chiku Bar to step forward, Reverend Father Ekon Chiso Ezebugu was sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Ewega and family. Let them get prepared to also come forward. If I mention any name, you please clap for them. If I mention any name, please clap for them. The money they contributed to sponsor them. The money contributed. For each of them, to what is sponsorship? Two million two hundred and fifty thousand naira. So when you are clap, clap very well. Two million two hundred and fifty thousand naira. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. And God bless you. God bless you. Mister and Missus Welcome. Thank you. God bless you and your family. Let Father Edmund please step forward and bless them, and then they will join His grace to take photograph. God bless you, sir. God bless you. As time goes on, we want to respectfully invite Reverend Father O. Philip Paul Mumuka, sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Eloju Obi. Mr. and Mrs. Eloju Obi, please step forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Mr. and Mrs. Eloju Obi, please step forward. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. As we wait for Mr. and Mrs. Eloziko Obi to come forward to receive blessings from the priest they have sponsored, we will now want to also mention that Father Emmanuel Ege Juru Kinokso was sponsored by Mr. and Mrs. Beatrice Kutoide. Mr. and Mrs. Beatrice Kutoide. So get ready to come forward to for blessings and after that, Take a picture with the Archbishop. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much for blessing. Mr. and Mrs. Beatrice Sotoide, please come forward so that the priest can bless you. Thank you so very much and God bless you. The last but not the least is. A major in the army and a priest of the Catholic Church from the Archdiocese of Venezuela, who has been away with the military, Sonia in particular, and decided to also sponsor a priest, Reverend Father Confidence Bakwa. 
God bless you. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all the priests, we are going to kneel wherever you are, and the Reverend Father Opera Emmanuel will be blessing us.